Hey guys, I'm Coxie. Three years ago, I obtained all pets in the game, and now it's time to run it back. A fresh new account with no stats or items, starting from scratch, with one goal in mind, speedrunning all pets as fast as possible. This is Funny Feelings. Holy, we are back and it is time for episode four. In the last episode, we obtained our third pet, Little Creator, and got some massive combat upgrades, including the Inferno Cape. I mentioned how the account is finally PVM ready in episode three, and here we are, baby. We are gonna be starting Vedion's solo version, Calvirion, today. This boss gives some insane combat XP, and it's actually really good money. The blade is still holding great value at over 50 mil just for the blade piece, and the total GP per hour averages out between six to eight mil. I can't even begin to describe how excited I am for the first proper boss pet hunt. Let's get this thing started. To optimally hunt Vedion pet, you'll want to kill its solo variant, Calvarion. The quicker kills, less PKers, and ability to instantly teleport due to being under 30 wilderness will save you time despite the drop rate being slightly higher than the multivariant. For this boss, you'll want a setup similar to these. Be aware of your risk and make sure your untradables are always parchmented. The easiest and safest way to get to Calvarion is running northeast out of the northern Ferox Enclave exit. Always be aware of nearby multi-lines, as PKers will often try to lure you there. Avoid them at all costs. Having an alt outside to scout is very beneficial, allowing you to see PKers before they enter the arena. Calvarion has two identical phases, each of them having 150 health. Periodically, lightning bolts will spot around you. Make sure you're two tiles away to avoid all damage. Calvirion also has a shield bash attack where its targeted area will have highlighted floor tiles and if not avoided, will lead you unable to attack for a few seconds. Calvirion will summon two hellhounds when his health is below 75 HP on each phase. Kill them while avoiding the lightning attacks. After the hellhounds have been killed, then you can return to hitting the boss. At the end of phase one, lightning bolts will spawn around the exterior of the boss. Step underneath and begin phase two. Due to each phase being such low HP, there's potential to skip the dog phase. For this reason, focusing on increasing your max hits where possible can be very beneficial to better kills per hour. With a rate of 1 in 2.8k and an average of 45 kills per hour, this boss comes out to be roughly 62 hours to hit the pet rate. Make sure you keep a close eye on your scout outside the room, and good luck on the Vedion pet. Speaking of excited, I woke up this morning insanely motivated. I got out of bed and I just wanted to just kill Calvarion so bad. I might have forgot to record my first trip, but don't worry. Nothing notable was dropped. You guys did not miss anything. And so for the first Calvarion Casey on the account is Dark Crabs on Casey 73, of course. In all honesty though, I cannot wait to farm this boss, I cannot wait to rake in the GP from it. Aside from the expensive Void Waker piece, the regular drop table is actually insanely good here compared to most other bosses in the game, so I'm really happy and really content with this being the first boss we're going for. Coming up quick on 100kc, and let me tell you what, this chain mace bonks, and it bonks hard. Ooh, I think this is a second or third elite so far from Calvarion. Part of the reason why I actually wanted to come to the wilderness in the first place is because their drop rate for elites are cracked. With an imbued ring of wealth, the drop rate from Vedion, Venenatus, Callisto, and their solo variants are all 1 in 50. You better expect a lot of Master Cassics to be rolling on in, and I want to see nobody complaining because I personally am a big fan of Clue Breaks. Alright, nice little casket opening, here we go. Oh, okay, Jungle Demon Mask, 22 Master KC, we'll take it. Number 2. Oh, Mimic. All right, off we go. Mimic has been slain. Casey number two with a PV. All right. And the loot is... Ooh, extra rent. Oh, wait, double call log slot. Samurai Grease, I have no idea how rare that is. Okay, we'll take it. And for the third and final casket, number 24. No way. Back-to-back -back Mimics. Are, okay. I, I'm not going to complain. Extra roll at the loot table. Who knows? We could get really lucky. All right. Mimic number three done and third casket stacked. What is it? Wait, Samurai Gloves? 
No way. Samurai Gloves and Samurai Greaves. I don't know how rare this is, but we just got back-to-back -back mimics, back-to-back -back samurai pieces. All right. I guess our luck is in a different place, but we'll take it. The first full strength level from Calvarion. We just hit 87 strength. I'm hoping to at least get 90 strength here before the pet. 90 strength is a good round number. Strength is usually prioritized in the combat triangle just because strength levels give you more max hits, which usually leads to more DPS. And uh, that is a very good thing in this game. The first 100 or so KC absolutely flew by. I'm not sure what kills per hour I should be expecting, but it already seems very quick, even at relatively low strength. Let's keep on grinding. We are still on day one of Calvarion. 200 KCN, no notable drops yet, but they will probably come in time. Oh, okay. Speaking of coming in time, 38 KC more. First ring of the gods. What? It is 4.3 mil. Gosh, I remember when this thing used to be 15 mil. What? No. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no way. All right, back-to-back -back elite clue scrolls are 1 in 50, so they're really common. Back-to-back -back is 1 in 2,500. Okay, huh? we'll take it. Let's go. Something that I learned when starting the series is that the treasure caskets from Temple Ross actually have a pretty good clue chance. It's 1 in 20 for easy clue, 1 in 33 for medium, and 1 in 50 for hard clues. So I'm going to be taking advantage of that and saving some money on not having to buy as many imps. When you have all three clues available to obtain, it's a 10% chance to get any of the three, which is pretty solid. We're out here saving money and not sacrificing time loss, and that, that's a win in my books. 88 strength coming in hot. We are getting strong. And look at that XP per hour. Almost 75k per hour, and that's including dealing with PKers and telling the Watson to store my elites. Sheesh. Oh, nah, not today, fish cooker eight. That right there is actually a perfect example of how important a scout alt is in the wilderness. I was able to see him hop into the world and hovered seed pod before he was even able to jump down. So as long as you're paying attention, it realistically should be impossible to die. Good morning. It is the second day of Calvary. I'm about to hit 500 KC. I did end up bringing a Berserker Ring switch. I actually found out it gives me plus two max hits in most scenarios, sometimes even more. But uh, the minimal it will give me is one max hit. So I think it is worth the switch. I'm still not risking much. I'm risking dragon boots and some parchments on my torso and inferno cape but that's about it yeah 500 kc it's flying by pet right here is one 2.8 k so we are roughly a fifth of the rate and yeah, it's getting up there oh oh my <laughs> Oh, that pop up got me. Uh, this is actually really good, though. This is one of the final requirements I need for the music cape, the champion scroll soundtrack, which is a brilliant thing. So I'm happy with that. I'll take it. Nice. We got this one passively out of the way. We don't have to go uh, cannoning goblins and lumberage for it. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. Ring of the Gods number two. Still do not have a D pick or a blade or pet by that means, but a couple Ring of the Gods of Champion Scroll. We'll take it. Nice. Casket 25. Okay, the call log 26. Oh, okay, go on. Another call log. And 27. <laughs> Average loot, but two call log slots. Okay. Man, the strength levels are shooting up. We just got 89 on the last trip, and we're probably going to be hitting 90 today. Oh, and the Elite Clue Printer coughs up again. We already got two sorts. This is our third, which means it is Master Clue time. Let's go. Knocked out those three clues pretty quick. And Casket 28, 29, and 30. Oh, oh, Bandle's Ornament Kit. That means money. Good morning. We ended up getting off a bit early last night and we didn't finish 90 strength, but it's Friday today and it's a better day to get a massive level anyways. There's 90 strength and 900 Calvary on KC. Happy Friday, guys. The weekend is here. There she is. 1,000 Calvary on KC and we're also averaging 48 kills per hour. Strength level is going up. DPS is going up. Kills per hour is going up. I wonder if we can push 50. 
We're getting pretty low on cash and I'm going to need to buy more imps soon for easy, medium and hard clues. So let's sell our current loot tab. We're barely over 1k KC. We've not had a Void Waker piece yet, unfortunately. But like I said earlier, the base drop table here is actually really good and it's nothing to complain about. Yeah, nice. 26 mil cash back up to a green cash stack. I can't show every master casket opening or else we'd be here all night, but I also want you guys to realize how much elites this boss really drops. I mean, 1 in 50 rate is just so common. Gosh, why can't every boss be like this so I have an excuse to do clues all day? But with that 3 casket opening, we are now to 36 masters completed and many, many more to come. 91 strength and 1200 calvarion kc coming on up right here in a second now i'm going to make my first purchase specifically for an extra max hit here with 91 strength if i were to wear a torva helm instead of an ezzy face guard i get an extra max hit allowing me to hit 76s which is pretty cool now i'm not sure if i'm going to keep the torva helm but i am going to go ahead and sell off my ancestral since i'm not slaying and save it for potential purchases to help my calvarion dps Aha, I was wondering when I'd see you. Finally, we get our first dragon pickaxe. We are 1210 KC. The drop rate from Calvirion is 1 in 358, so we're getting pretty close to four times the drop rate, which is pretty unlucky. D pick is around 2.8 mil, so anytime I see these, I'm going to be a happy man. Oh, oh, when it rains, it pours. D pick number two, only 27 KC after the first one. Bro, what? What is our luck? Okay, D pick number three, 1259 KC. Well, it, it takes us 1200 KC for our first one, and then we get three and 40 KC. <laughs> oh, I love this game we play. Oh, holy sh- Oh my gosh. Okay, yes sir. First Void Waker Blade, 1295 KC. I'm pretty sure this thing is like over 50 mil right now. First big drop. I'm not sure what the dropper is of Void Waker Blade. It is it's like around one in 900 from here. So we're a little bit over the drop rate, but this thing is very high in price. I am not gonna complain about this. Yes sir, we're making money. 100% did not mean to open this in the desert, but casket number 40, there we go. And the next two caskets, 41 and 42, here we go. Oh, call log, okay. Very average loot. 42, we're getting close to 50, whew. All right, listen up. I've been hesitant on buying a Vernic Defender because I'm nervous of all the gear that I'll need to be buying when I probably start the Slayer grind. Stuff like Cerberus, Sire, Kraken, Grotesque Guardians require all three combat styles, and I wanna be able to buy best in slot gear before starting them. Now, in my opinion, a Vernic Defender is a great upgrade, but you can't sell it back and it's pretty pricey right now, sitting at around 80 mil. I did just get my first Void Waker Blade, and after doing some calculations, I realized that with my gear setup and strength level, upgrading to a Vernic Defender actually gives me two more max hits and 3.06% better DPS. So just going from a Dragon Defender to a Vernic Defender, I'm getting plus two extra strength bonus, and it also gives me plus two max hits, which actually greatly increases the threshold for me to skip Calvarion Dogs. So there's multiple layers here of why I think this is beneficial, and oh, I actually just noticed we got 78 Hunter on that Vert House run, but back to what I was saying, I'm genuinely convinced that this upgrade is worth it at this time in the account, and this is also an item I'm never gonna have to worry about buying again. So I'm happy with this purchase. Yeah, haha, I just got that lovely notification in the chat box that a Vernick bought. Let's get this bad boy parchmented and let's put it to good use. Ooh, another deep pick. Yo, Calvarion, listen, I'm open for business all night. You can keep them coming and I promise I won't say a word. Man, why does this always happen? I am so addicted to the game right now. I am just wanting to log in and just forgetting to record. But there's Void Waker Blade number two, 1627 KC. This thing is still just under 50 mil now. It's around 45 mil. Money, man. Money, money, money. This is actually a perfect example of a dog skip. It was helped out by the bleed effect from the Earth and Chain Mace, but this is a reason why you actually want to be aware of your max hits and if there's any potential way to increase it. At my strength level, they aren't happening often. I would say I notice a dog skip like every couple hours or so. At the end of the day, it is a time save though. And on a speed run, we like that.
What? No, 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 no. Oh my, I was leaned all the way back reclining in my chair. Voidmaker Blade number three, 1847. Man, oh, money. We are getting rich. Oh my gosh, that skull person scared me. That is a crossbow warrior if I've ever seen one. Well, there is 93 strength, and you might notice that I preemptively already changed my gear. If I were to keep D high chaps on, I stayed a 78 max hit, but with the introduction of Tassist in this gear setup, I jumped to an 81 max hit. A three max hit difference is insane, and my DPS goes up by 3.85%. I might look like I'm risking a lot, but I'm protecting my Torva Helm, Chain Mace, Tacits, and Ferocious Gloves. My real only risk is Berserker Ring and 3 Parchments, so it's really not too bad, but I'm definitely going to keep a close eye on my scout. Speaking of max hits, look at how beautiful she is. Holy. It's been a while since a casket opening, and this is big number 50. Oh, Jesus. Samurai shirt. We are on pace to finish the whole Samurai set this video. Casket 51. And 52 with the call log slot. Yup. Man, I know I've been talking about it a lot, but we're up to 48 kph and 83.4k strength XP per hour. I mean, this really just is a better version of NMZ while also doing content that drops a pet and nets you 6 mil per hour long run. Uh oh. Oh, and then there it is. The spooning continues. Voidwaker Blade number four at 2059 KC. With a drop rate of one in 912, I'm only expected to have two at this KC. So yeah, I would say we're pretty lucky. Another three caskets, but this time at Mage Bank for the good luck. Here we go. 62 with Dragon Defender Ornament Kit. All right, trimmed out in gold. Now we uh, did upgrade to a Vernix, so I will not be using this, but that's okay. We'll take it. Call log. 63 and 64 oh anguish ornament kit seven mil wow okay all right that is money another day another strength level that is 94 and actually with this level we can take off our tacits and lower our risk and still have that 81 max hit so i will be doing that and we can recline a little bit not have to stare at the scout alt and be worried about losing a b-ring master kc update 71 kc 72 kc with the call log slot holy blessing okay and the lucky number 73 nothing It's been a while since so we've done a KC update. We're at 2,500 now. The drop rate is 1 in 2,800, so we're getting pretty close. All righty, there's the drop rate, and we are officially overrate on our second pet. Earlier today, we also hit 95 strength, and I decided to stop there and switch over to attack. With Obsidian Legs added, we still have an 81 max hit on accurate, which is perfect. 99 strength is going to be finished off at Cerberus, since it's very important to have your scythe on Crush, and Crush is strength XP only. And away we go. These attack levels are going to start rolling in quick. There is 3,000 KC. I'm sorry for talking quiet. It's really late at night right now. But uh, yeah, another big milestone. Hello, Tormented Ornament Kit. We are getting so many ornament kits this episode. My gosh. And 80 Master KC. You know, go and, go and try it, Calvarion. And, you know, there are benefits. Master KC is getting up there. We are closing in on a 10th of the drop rate. Only 20 more to the big 100. Yes, I know the alt screen is covering it right now, but 79 Hunter, we've been doing birdhouse runs, well, trying to be consistently doing birdhouse runs for four months now. Uh, goal is 80, so one more level to go. I'm a little bit late to the party, but Vordaker Blade number five on 4,166 KC. The last few days, no notable drop, just a lot of clues and master caskets. The KC is flying by and we are up to 89 attack already. 90 attack, 95 strength coming soon. I am ready for that. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh this game is so easy. There is Vordaker Blade number six. Uh, at 4251, I just got my fifth one an hour ago. It's a good day today. Yes, it is. And 90 attack. That puts us at 90 attack, 95 strength. Man, look at those combats. Combat stats are starting to look good. 96 HP now. The account is getting up there. 
It's been a while since we've done a master KC update. The last few days though, we have been flying through a Calvarion KC and we have been getting a lot of elites, just nothing notable GP wise or no cool call log slots. But these three, these three are a special three. Casket number 98, 99, and 100 with the scroll sack, brilliant fashion scape. But guys, Vedion is our first official pet hunt, and this puts us at a tenth of the rate for Bloodhound. Okay, first PVM pet we go for, we're already a tenth of the rate. Going dry definitely has its benefits at a place like Vedion. Oh, thank f that dude. Oh my god, I was so slouched. So slouched. Oh my lord, there she is. Oh. Yes. Yes. Vedion Pet has been obtained. 4586 Calvarion KC. The loot. We're missing 500 KC because I had two client crashes and uh, I lost two full days of progress basically. 460 mil, add about 50 mil to that. So we made probably like 510 mil overall with all the loot. Six blades, definitely lucky on blades. I am so glad we got this out of the way and I am so glad we did not have to go 10K plus KC on this one. Yo, good morning, good morning. It's a new day. Yesterday, we got Vetti on pet. And oh, dude, when you get a pet, I swear you ride the high for 48 hours after. But anyways, I was just sat down with a cup of coffee debating what we're going to do next on the account. Vetti on pet marks number four, and it took me 16 days to get it, which is a bit longer than I expected. After some thought, I finally realized what we're going to do, and I have a game plan in action. Next up, we're going to go for one of the quickest pets in the game. We're going to build some momentum and we're going to get ourselves back on that lucky streak. The quickest way to get to Chaos Elemental is through the level 50 teleport on the Wilderness Obelisk, which can be built in your player-owned house. This boss resides west of Rogue's Castle and can wander all the way to the Wilderness Resource Area. Chaos Elemental has three attacks, a primary attack that can deal mage, range, or melee damage, and two special attacks. Keep prey mage on during the fight. The first of its special attacks can teleport you anywhere in the surrounding area to Chaos Elemental. And the second special attack unequips up to four worn items. It's best to turn Vile Smasher off and use Summer Pies as food, ensuring your inventory is always full and rendering this particular boss attack useless. Now that we understand the boss, you want an inventory setup similar to this. The most important item being Web Weaver Bow. There are several uses for alts at this boss. The first alt's purpose is to heal your main, meaning you'll never have to eat mid-kill. DPS alts can also be utilized, but be aware, with each DPS alt you add, the more damage you take from AoE attacks, meaning the healer alt has a more difficult role. Alts can also be used to red stall the Chaos Elemental. This similar method can be seen during Baba and higher tier invocations at TOA. To set this up, you'll need at least one extra account to hold the red X. The easiest way to do this is kill Chaos Ellie, drop an item underneath it, and wait for the boss to spawn. On the account that you plan on holding Chaos Ellie with, you want it to send an attack onto you, click attack the boss, click the item you dropped, then click to open an interface. Most commonly used are the house options or any skill interface. It's important that you do these actions all one tick after each other while making sure that nothing breaks the stall. There are many spots that you can stand to attack Chaos Ellie at a safe distance. I used this spot during my pet hunt. Setting up multiple worlds can greatly increase kills per hour, reaching upwards of 110. Enjoy the speed because its drop rate is only 1 in 300, and it is in the top 2 for quickest pets in OSRS. Good luck out there, and be safe. Hello, Chaos Elemental. You are up next, my friend. This method with four accounts is actually a bit more obnoxious than I expected due to the fact that this boss just rips through you like you're basically wearing no armor. I'm getting around 80 kills per hour, which is roughly what I expected. Top left client is the main, bottom left client is a healer, and the two on the right are DPS salts with Black Dehyde, Tebos, and Vengeance. I'm taking advantage of hopping worlds so that I don't have to deal with the one minute respawn timer, and we're already up to 170 KC, which is about half the drop rate. Away we go. I'm only two hours in right now, no D picks yet, and surprisingly, no PKers either. Little KC update. We are 400 plus in, which means we are overrate, but I've not even been at this boss for six hours yet, so it doesn't really feel like it. Dude, we are chilling, no complaints. 
I've definitely gotten a bit more comfortable with this boss using alt and keeping on track with healing on all the accounts. It is most definitely not the most enjoyable alt method, I'll be straight up honest, but what would this lovely game be without some tedious and slightly annoying grinds? You know, saying that out loud is actually kind of eye-opening. I wonder if there's really OSRS players who truly only ever do content they enjoy, and anything they don't enjoy, they just skip it. Or do we all just mindlessly suffer through hard grinds because we're conditioned to do so? Huh. Maybe I should have been a therapist. Or better yet, actually, maybe I'm the one that needs one. I'll get back to you later on that when I find the answer. Okay, we are back on track. This is going to be Big Casey number 500, and I got a little surprise for you guys next. Oh, okay, well, okay, well, the Elite Clue is not the planned surprise, but hell yeah, thank you. Okay, now this is what I call a speedrun. My good friend set up the red X stall method on three worlds after realizing that I was already almost double the drop rate here. Okay, now... Before we get any further, I will pay him for his time, and the rule of no handouts, donations, free boosting still holds strong. This series is for me to explore the limits of pet hunting efficiency, and I'd like to say that this is probably the best chaos elemental method that I've ever seen. I'm still using four accounts here, my main and one alt are showing on screen, and two alts are off screen to the west. I spread out my accounts so that if PKers show up, they don't get the easiest barrage pile of their career and drop all of my accounts. With this method in only four DPS accounts, we easily average over 100 kph, which puts it at only three hours to hit the drop rate. Oh, there she fucking is. Oh, baby, 632 KC. Nice over double drop rate. That is pet number five on the account. 33 days, six hours. A really quick one, one of the quickest in the game. I think only beaten by Chompy Chick, but uh, I am definitely glad to get this one out of the way. I'm not gonna complain about a pet ever. I have absolutely no idea how much paying someone to set up Red X stall for Chaos Ellie would be worth, but I'd rather overpay than under. We did just over an hour, so I'm gonna go ahead and pay for 90 minutes at 10 mil per account per hour. If I had known about this method from the start, I would have absolutely taken advantage of it, but I'm glad I was able to do it even for just a little bit. What a crazy way to kill that boss. I would have never imagined something like that. It has been 3 months and 12 days since our account creation and we finally began PVM and legitimate boss pet hunts, something I've been looking forward to since the dawn of this account. We spent 2 weeks at Calvarion and went from 82 attack 85 strength to 90 attack 95 strength. This jumped our combat level up from 107 to 114. The bank value is just over 1.8 billion GP even after spending quite a lot of money on Gourmet, Eclectic, and Magpie Implings. We've surpassed 100 Master Clue KC, one tenth of the rate for the longest pet in the game, and we obtained two pets ourselves, Vedion Jr. and Chaos Elemental, putting us at 5 out of 52 pets. I'm sorry to all my stats lovers, but you guys are going to have to wait until episode 5 for our next class. We are cooking up something spicy, and I promise you, the wait will be worth it.